A recent breakthrough in quantum computing has seen the quantum computing company Xanadu join the ranks of Google and a group of Chinese scientists to have demonstrated what is called quantum computational advantage or quantum supremacy. This is another major milestone towards eventually creating a universal quantum computer. In fact, this latest result took a total of 36 microseconds to compute, which the scientists estimate would take thousands of years on the best supercomputers that we have today. But outperforming supercomputers is one thing, outperforming it on something that's actually useful is another. So what did these scientists do? Why was this a major milestone? And when can we expect a practical quantum computational advantage to give us a real life improvement? Let's discuss it. Quantum computing will fundamentally change the way we solve problems. This is because of the way quantum computers work. They take advantage of quantum mechanics to enhance the power of each bit. In classical computing, a bit only has two values, a zero or a one, where a quantum bit or a qubit has a range of values. But this is not really the power of a quantum computer. The power is when you combine qubits. Basically, when you combine classical bits, the computational power increases as a function of the number of bits, n. Whereas qubits, computational power increases as a function of the power of n, meaning that just a few qubits can start to outperform classical computing. Additionally, some problems are simply easier to perform in the quantum way. This is where quantum algorithms can help to simplify complex problems down to something that is trivial on a quantum computer. One example of a problem that is significantly easier to perform with quantum computers is boson sampling, which is what this latest result performed. Boson sampling is an example of a computationally complex mathematical problem that cannot be efficiently simulated on a classical computer. But with significantly reduced experimental requirements compared to a universally computational scheme, it involves sampling a probability distribution of interfered photons passing through a set of linear optics. Basically, if you inject photons into a photonic circuit with multiple outcomes, where do these photons end up? It sounds like a simple problem, but it is really not. It is extremely difficult. But if you build a photonic circuit, you can do this calculation with photons directly. Boson sampling has been performed before in similar systems. So what makes this latest result so interesting? Well, for starters, previous demonstrations used fewer photons, using only 76 and 113 photons compared to up to 219 photons in this latest study. But it is not so much the sheer number of photons that was interesting, it was how they managed to get to that number which involved a different approach. Boson sampling requires the photons to be in the photonic circuit at the same time. Traditionally, to get more photons into the circuit, scientists added more and more beam splitters, making the circuit longer and thus allowing more photons to exist in the simultaneously. Instead of this approach, these scientists added a long loop of fiber optical cable. This allowed for more photons to be in the circuit and allowed for them to interfere with photons that were emitted at different times. This is powerful as the scalability of such techniques is much greater than simply adding more and more beam splitters. Additionally, this simplified the circuit and allowed for components afterwards to be easily swapped or programmatically altered. This is significant as other demonstrations required rebuilding of the setup to attempt to calculate something different. This has led to the system being able to be accessed online by people from all over the globe to perform quantum computations. While this isn't the first quantum computer to have this ability, with IBM's quantum computer having this capability for quite some time, it is still a significant step. 
This is a pretty amazing result. But the obvious question is, how does this translate into something more useful? Well, unfortunately, not very well. It is known to be merely a demonstration. One paper describes it as, the problem itself, other than being computational curiosity, has no known practical application or killer application, such as integer factorization. But it is still a great milestone. It is important to demonstrate that quantum computing is an absolute powerhouse at solving certain complex problems. We are not at the stage of a universal quantum computer, nor are we at the state of solving useful problems. But we are getting there and it will happen. If you like this video, check out this video where I talk about how scientists are starting to use two-dimensional materials to make quantum computers. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.